and breathe through your nose. You can look down a little if you want, but lift your chest up. Move your feet a little if you want. Let the breath be natural. Let yourself be calm. So notice there's no question of making yourself anything, but letting yourself. And raise the arms up. When you've raised the arms up, release the roots of your neck. Good job. So the roots of the neck uh, go down from the uh, neck through to the upper back. So we're talking about the trapezius. And then press your feet, raise your fingers, inhale. Exhale, bend your ankles, knees and hips. Good. And there's some cracking as we would expect. <laughs> and so this is called Utkatasana. Utkata means to squat. So you can bounce it or play with it in any way you like, knees forwards or backwards, or you can turn it, one arm back, one arm forwards, for example. What we're looking for is incorporation, right? bringing things together into one body. And because it's called Udkata, some people do like to take it into a lower squat, but that's fine. But you don't, it's also fine not to. <laughs> and then standing up when you're ready. Big circle, hands to the heart. Let's have a deep breath or two. Good idea. It's warm, isn't it? Let's get some windows open. That's a good idea. And perhaps you can feel your heartbeat and it's selfless, isn't it? In, in the sense that the heartbeat increases. When it increases, you don't tell it to increase. It increases through movements of the body and changes of the mind and changes of the breath. So the heart is conditioned by the mind, the body, the breath. Raise the arms up again. Lightly tone your tummy in reiterative waves, like it's being combed in and up. Find a buoyancy at the pelvic floor that is tuned into through a sense of easefulness, a sort of Saturday morning vibe is ideal. <laughs> and of course, there's no pressure. There's just gentle uh, bringing together. You know, we're, we're not uh, dictators <laughs> in our own body experience. <laughs> Press the feet, raise the fingers when you're ready, inhale. Exhale, same thing as before, although you never step in the same river twice, says Heraclitus. So you can bounce, you can turn, you can, you know, the point is flow, right? And flow happens everywhere if it's happening anywhere. So any movements you make can be anything. It, uh, that is to say, it can't be anything, but it can be anything that conduces to an increased sense of this coming together. And obviously to the extent that we're together, we feel good. And to the extent that we're uh, divided, we feel less good. So even the movements into a yoga posture, even towards a squat, it's not important to squat. And some people won't be able to squat in a month of Sundays. And that's fine. And then coming all the way up, big circle, hands to the heart, take a deep breath or two, or three, or four, or five. Okay, straight into Adho Mukha Svanasana. So outer rows turn in. This middle row turns out. Adho Mukha Svanasana is downward facing dog. And at home, you can be wherever you want. So pad your paws into a deeper weave with the yoga mat through repetition and the repetition of the body's union with the mat is also of course bringing ourselves together bringing any disparate parts of our experience gently together so breath is number one and what's number one about the breath is allowing it to be natural not getting caught up in patterns, but recognizing them as they are, as selfless. 
reactions, whether they be the reactions of the heart or mind or body or nerves, are selfless. Come down to regular kneeling when you're ready. And you can put a block between the heels and buttocks and sit up. And take some deep breaths. One hand on top of the other, close your eyes if you like. Breathing easy and natural. Breathing easy and natural. Take your knees a little way apart. Toes are touching. Come forwards very slowly. Now, there are ways to do this that make it easier, and I'll come and help anyone who needs it, but uh, knees apart, toes touching, we're coming forwards real slow with the fingers on the floor. So I'm coming to bring you love and uh, the love you need. So coming forwards real slow, breathing through the nose. Okay. Real slow. The idea is, see if you can sit back on there. Try that. Nearly. Yeah. Good. Well done. Take a few deep breaths. Good job. So this is Balasana, the child pose. Balasana, of course, increases the blood pressure in the head a little. And that tells our basic systems that the blood pressure has gone up everywhere, which it hasn't, but the basic systems think it has, which means we switch into a parasympathetic response, a calming, settling, centering. Walk your hands slowly back towards your knees. And as soon as you're ready, come to lay on your back with your hands underneath your head, face, <coughs> facing into the room, into the, so head towards the outer walls, head towards the outer walls. And breathing easy. Breathing easy. <coughs> Take two or three deep breaths. Legs bent, hands under your head. Breathing easy. Take an extra deep breath when you're ready. And lift up your feet. Let your lower back settle into the floor. So that's easy too, very easy. Breathing through your nose. Actually letting the lower back settle has an effect on the whole nervous system as well. Letting the lower back settle. Pay some extra attention to your exhalations. And just notice your exhalations being a little bit longer than your inhalations. Observe the selflessness of release of the lower back. Make an imprint into 
and the abdomen by lifting up the head. And as Patanjali says, you can look towards the Narbha Chakra, the navel center. And so this world is very stimulating, obviously. <laughs> it's called the uh, Karma Loka, that is the, the realm of uh, sensuality of the senses. So if you make an imprint into the stimulated nervous system, then what the nervous system is already holding through to the muscles is offered a way out. The body can't serve two masters at the same time. It can't serve the reactiveness of the nerves at the same time as responding to the request that the pose is asking to stimulate the abdominals. Bring your head back down when you're ready, feet back down. And if you're ready, take a deep breath. Focus on the exhale. And then another, and another. So head down, feet down, eyes soft. Again, just noticing the calming effect, particularly of the exhale. And with the release of the jaw. The release of the jaw. Release your hands when you're ready from behind your head. And raise up a leg. And you get to choose which leg. Well, I mean, out of the two that you possess, you get to choose one or the other because we're going to do both eventually. And once you've raised a leg, interlace your fingers behind the thigh and take some deep breaths. Interlace your fingers behind the thigh and take some deep breaths. Great. So again, there's this gentle imprint Samskara can mean an imprint into the muscles, which may already be driven by other reactivity. <laughs> and that offers the opportunity for that to release. Those of the, you that are comfortable could walk up to the calf muscles and press your fingers into the calf muscles, pressing up and down, moving between the foot and the back of the knee, a sort of massage. And anyone who quite frankly has got very short legs and very long arms might want to reach up to the foot, but that is a precondition that you'd have to have long arms and short legs really to reach the foot. So we can stay with behind the knee or pressing into the calf. What matters is this time that we have, which has no pressure for us to settle. Okay, if you're ready, release that leg. If you want to take a deep breath, <coughs> Let a few deep breaths happen. The breath is kind. The breath is kind. Raise up your other leg. We'll call it leg number two, if you like. And interlace your fingers behind the thigh. Draw deep breaths, if you want and gently press the thigh into the hands and the hands into the thigh. And just notice if there's any sensation, gentle or otherwise, in the front thigh of the raised leg. The sensations might include tingling. They might include heat. They might include buzzing or fizzing just sensations in the front thigh and develop those sensations with love within the context of your breath. Until you feel a gentle 
pulling on the kneecap, which brings with it a subtle and I hope pleasant release of the heel. Again, if you want, you can go up to the calf muscles, two muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus, and press into those. And if you've got those long, long arms and short, short legs, you can reach up to your foot if you want. Let the whole process be settling, especially around the breath and the back and the neck. And again, know that it's making a gentle imprint into the muscles so that what the muscles were previously being driven to by reactivity is that reactivity is given an out. It's given a, a chance to receive an, an invitation. Okay, super. Well done, bring the leg down. Let's all take a deep breath if you're ready. <sighs> And then another and another and another. And, you know, just let them roll through you. Just let them roll through you. Deep breaths. And then lift up your feet and give your legs a very gentle hug. I actually quite like to lift my head for a little bit as well, because I enjoy the extra stretch of lifting the pelvis and curling up. But that's optional. But what I think we all find benefit in doing is rolling a little. <laughs> so if you roll one side, you might find a, a sensation that's really nice. <laughs> or if you roll to the other side, maybe that, that bit's there as well, or maybe a deeper sensation. Remember the richness of the present moment sensations provide a little outlet, a doorway for the release of the reactivity that the body's holding. That reactivity is known in traditional yoga as karma or karma vipaka. So the law of karma is the law of, well, it's like Newtonian law. For every action, there's a reaction. <clears throat> Sometimes you're going to find a really good imprint that just imprints deeply enough for there to be that little outlet, that little release of pressure so that the body, instead of being owned by reactivity, becomes open, becomes peaceful. Buddhists use the expression empty, it becomes empty. But what they mean by that is not driven. <laughs> you could use the word clear <laughs> instead of empty if you wanted. If you're ready, release your legs, place your feet. And if you're ready, take a natural breath that's natural and easy to you. Let your neck relax, let your jaw relax. And just roll over towards the Buddha side. Obviously, those of you Zooming at home uh, might roll in a different direction. I don't know how your camera's set up. <laughs> and lay on your side. <clears throat> in a position that I think is ideal for eating grapes um, mm -hmm. in, <laughs> or ideally being fed grapes is my preference when I lay like this. And then extend your bottom ribs. So you're stretching the intercostals between the ribs and extend your armpit as well. Now here's an opportunity for, for more impressions, samskara, by rolling forwards and backwards, you might find sensations that are, there you go, I found one. I can't speak when I find one. Or at least, you know, normal language. I can't speak normal language. <laughs> <laughs> Only expressive 
like, ah, oh, that's the kind of language, isn't it? Ah, oh. ah, oh. or ooh, or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> and sometimes expressive language even includes words, uh, you know, like uh, they're often religious exclamatives. Like some people, oh God, you know. It doesn't really cause on to use exclamatives from Buddhism in the same way. People tend to say, you know, Jesus, Jesus, you know, God. They don't tend to say, you know, oh, have a Loki taste for a, you know, or a, oh, Manju Sri. <laughs> There's time, I guess, about to develop. So deep breaths and just rolling around. Now, when you're ready, come back to the upright. And then we're going to play with the top leg. And it's an investigative movement between the horizontal and vertical. And it's making impressions into the nervous system through the muscles to the nerves. And of course, there's a communication trying to go to the muscles the other way. So from the outside, we practice the pose. It goes to the muscles and then through to the nerves. And then there's another signal, which is the nerve habits that we can call karma coming the other way from the nerves to the muscles. The muscles can't be run by two masters at the same time. So when you come into a yoga pose and you really let yourself feel the richness and encourage more richness of it, then that richness invites the release through the muscles back to the nerves of what the nerves were holding previously. Now there's an exciting challenge ahead and it is the weekend and I know you like excitement. See if you can take your hand to your foot minimally or not at all moving your foot. So instead of doing this sort of thing, see if you can instead soften all this tissue around the top of the thigh until, you now it takes me ages until you can bring, <laughs> bring the foot to your hand. And it's difficult for me because uh, by nature or nurture, um, I'm not very patient. I think maybe it's a societal thing as well, because the more, you know, the more internet speed we get, the less patient we are. <laughs> right? So you go on a website and there's 20 seconds and then, oh, it's not come on yet, forget it. You know, just taking 20, I'll go on another you know, website or, you know, 20 seconds is too much, isn't it? wait for a website to boot up. Um, we expect things to be as fast as our thoughts. Thank God that they're not. We have thousands more thoughts a day than we have breaths. So if you pay attention to your breath, you bring your thought onto your breath, as it were, you enjoy your breath, it will slow the speed of your thinking down. <laughs> and then when it's slow enough, you'll realize that it's just an endless production factory of nonsense anyway. So you can hold the big toe if you, if you want or not, and you can extend the leg or not. The pose is called anantasana. Ananta means forever. So an means not, like we use it sometimes in uh, English, like ana anachronism or there's lots of ways we use, it means not. And anta means the end. So the pose means it doesn't have an end, so it's eternal. Okay, bring your leg down because the pose itself isn't eternal. What it's pointing to is bring your head down, draw your knees up. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Let yourself be soothed by the sensations in the deep belly. There's a point in your deep belly, if you focus on it, is as calming as, and, and restorative as deep sleep. Just let yourself rest in it. In your deep belly. And once you're back in the center, instead of caught up in the peripheral, which is reactivity, once you're back in the center, then all your actions and speech and thought become yogic. 
curl up from the side <laughs> like a sleepy letter C, <laughs> which I have to define clearly because I did once have, as some of you know, a student that heard it as come up like a sleepy lettuce leaf. And he didn't tell me that for a whole year. So he spent a whole year trying to come up like a sleepy lettuce leaf. And actually, I think it was quite, a fit, quite good for him. <laughs> so, anyway, extend your bottom ribs and extend. And I think if you eat enough lettuce, it is quite soporific, someone was telling me the other day. <laughs> or oh, never think of this trust. Never avoid that if you can. <laughs> Extend the bottom ribs. Breathe easy. Sure. <laughs> and then roll about a bit and see if you can find sensations that are rich enough to make you forget about Tory prime ministers of any kind. <laughs> and instead to think of Caroline Lucas, someone like that, or, you know, David Attenborough, perhaps, David Attenborough for Prime Minister, please. <laughs> and just rolling forwards and backwards. And see if you can find a sensation that's, I'm going to say, that's juicy. Oh, sometimes you find a sensation that makes your mouth make an O shape. Your eye muscles can <coughs> clench up. And you, oof, that's what we want. Yoga is a very simple practice, actually. It's the practice of experiencing something rich enough to challenge your reactivity, conditionality, to challenge it, to offer some meaty opposition to the reactivity. And then, you give to that richness and that's it so that's why we want to find a juicy sensation you've got to find something rich it could be you could practice yoga looking at a sunset and giving to that or feeling someone you really like giving you a kiss on the cheek yeah, and giving to that um, or even thinking of something that you find calming and giving to that When you're ready, coming back <coughs> to the position on the side and bringing your top leg up and playing. Anatomically, there's several things going on. If you're into anatomy, you're a bit of a nerd, you like to have things validated by science, then you might want to know that as you move, it stimulates the tensor fascia latin muscle, which brings tone to the <coughs> iliotibial tract on the outer leg. And that sends a signal to the adductor muscles on the inner thighs for them to lengthen and release. On top of which, as you move backwards and forwards, you push fluid out of the tissue around the top of the thighs, and then it comes back in. That tissue becomes softer, more palpable. And that allows you to bring the leg more to the upright, the softer the tissue is around the top of the thigh. I think it's important for us to understand that the release of the body needs the release of the mind. It's an invitation because they're actually the same thing. The release of the body needs the release of the mind. So it's saying, would you, would you be kind enough to come along with me? The body says to the mind. Because the body needs that to be able to release. Again, there's the option to reach, and this takes discipline, the Sanskrit word kushanti, which means patience or forbearance, mm -hmm. is one of the perfections that Buddhists practice, or, you know, they say that they're practicing anyway. <laughs> so, these perfections are practiced by Mahayana Buddhists, that is to say, Buddhists practicing what's known as the great Mahayana path or way. And they include patience and generosity. <laughs> and for someone like me, I don't know about you, I really have to practice those. 
I'm all right at generosity, actually, but patience. The leg can stay bent or extend. It's up to you. But breathe into agreement. So remember that yoga is a rich sensation, <laughs> a rich sensation. That's one stepping stone. And then the other is to give to it. So it's not yoga just to stretch or to feel a rich sensation. It becomes yoga at the point you begin to give to it. And you give or resist always through the breath. And here's an interesting fact, if you're a nerd anyway, you're always giving or resisting through your breath. 24-7. Wunderbar, as the Germans are given to say at occasions such as this. Bring your leg down, take a breath, curl up, take a breath, jaw soft. Ah, relax if you like. Ah. Remember that if you can focus on the Naba Chakra, which you can, <laughs> that is the navel center, there's a point deep in the belly that you can rest in. and has a profound effect like deep sleep, like deep sleep. Come up calmly from the side if you can. I think I've knocked myself out actually. Someone might have to get me up. Come on. Oh my lord. Come on. <laughs> And we're going to sit on one or two blocks. Uh, can I borrow one of yours, Sam? Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I've got two here. I don't need two. I didn't realize I could get back. Thank you for the loan. Sitting on one or two blocks. Now, how do you ascertain whether it's one or two blocks? Well, it depends. What we're going to do is have our legs extended out in front of us, and then we're going to sweep the legs around to one side. So you're going to face this way or this way. So somewhere towards this wall behind me is where you're facing with your legs stretched out. So we start like this. Doing the, you're doing the opposite of what I'm doing. And then your legs go over to one side, let's say that side. And if that's tricky, sit on one block, two blocks, three blocks. If it's easier, if this is difficult, sit cross-legged on a couple of blocks with a blanket because we're just going to twist the spine. It doesn't matter if your legs are crossed or whether they're over to one side. Now, it first came to my attention the Buddhist monks in the Hinayana tradition uh, sit like this. When I went to uh, Sri Lanka a few years ago, teaching a yoga retreat, and I saw some iconography with loads of Buddhist monks sitting like this. And I, thought, <laughs> I thought, that's interesting. I thought, <laughs> this is called Bharadvaja or Bharadvaja Sanam. And it's a name of a sage that appears a lot in Buddhist texts. When I went to a Buddhist monastery two, two weeks ago, all the monks were sitting like this, and it pleased me enormously. And what really pleased me was I accidentally sat where the monks are supposed to sit, and I was surrounded by monks, and I was like, oh, it's <laughs> nice. There's <laughs> nothing nicer than to be huddled by monks, I find. <laughs> so, but what they didn't do, they sat like this, but they didn't do this bit. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. Uh, I mean, they might have done if something interesting had happened to the side of them. Breathe easy, breathe easy. Relax your eyes, relax your jaw, relax the buttocks. If you're someone who thinks a lot, welcome to the club. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very big club. We want to notice that thoughts are constantly being manufactured out of the reactions of the nerves and out of the stimuli of the senses. And they constantly create thoughts. And I recently spontaneously came up with a, 
the reflection that it's like a sausage machine, the mind, like a sausage machine. Yes, I said that. And sausages, I don't know if this is true or not. There's a report, isn't there, about sausages. It's just made up of any old crap that's right. You know, just put it all together and make a sausage, whatever's laying around. And I said, it's a myth probably, but, and then they make sausages. Same with, think, with thinking. Any old crap that's laying around makes a thought and then it pops out of the sausage machine and then another comes. And then another comes. And so it's impersonal, it's just a factory. So it's important just to let that be, just let the sausage machine produce sausages, but not attach too much importance to them. Turn back to center, <laughs> breathe easy. It's one of my silliest metaphors ever, I think, the sausage machine metaphor. Anyway, stretch your legs out. After saying it for a week in Morocco recently, I came back to the Buddhist center and Kadeen, for some reason, related the fact that I kept mentioning sausage machines to her class. And somebody overheard and said, did you know the Buddhist center before it was a Buddhist center was a sausage factory? Mm -hmm. Legs over to the other side. It's a mystery. Arthur C. Clarke could get involved in this. So anyway, this, this place used to just make sausages. <laughs> Like that, plurp, 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 out of whatever crap was laying around. So it's important not to pay too much attention. You know, we pay enough attention to thoughts to leave them alone. But when we don't pay enough attention, we get caught up in them. Now, thoughts and breath and body are one thing. That's why it's important when you're doing an embodied practice to let thoughts just go plop, 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 plop. They're just like that, you know. Inhale, lift and turn, away from your feet. Soften your eyes if you want. Soften your eyes. As if you're looking at something that would make your eyes soft, like the sunlight coming through the leaves of perhaps a beech tree in May. To me, that makes my eyes soft. Or whatever else makes your eyes soft. Another thing that makes my eyes soft, I don't know if it does this to you, if I ever see an elderly couple holding hands, <laughs> I don't know why it does something to me. I'm like, oh, look, so lovely. <laughs> Beautiful, return to center. It's Bharad Vajasana. And we're going to dismount. We're going to come again into Adho Mukha Svarasana. That's the downward facing dog. Come up when you're ready. And we're going to do it twice. First way, well, just like this, just like we are. And the second way, well, we'll talk about that when we come to it. This first way, really bringing your attention to the present because you know, the sausage factory makes these sausages, these nervous system that include thoughts and reactions out of random memories of the past and obscure expectations about the future. So that makes these sort of really cheap, you know, sausage, I don't know, I, I, I don't eat these kinds of sausages, but you know, really cheap, I think you can buy really cheap sausages, can't you, that like, cost nothing, that are all probably terrible. But if you bring your attention into the present, you know, and pad your paws into deeper weave, stretch up through the back, then what the mind's making the sausages, sorry about this metaphor, out of, becomes purer and purer until they become those very delicious, expensive tofu sausages from Infinity Foods <laughs> that you can only afford once a fortnight if you're lucky. <laughs> armpits open to the groins, outer armpits open to the hips, breathing natural. 
breathing naturally. Well done. Come down to a regular kneeling, or sorry, hands and knees position. And then we're going to take the second version. Now, the second version, you're probably going to need to use two, a minimum of two blocks and a blanket. But I'll show you the second version uh, because then you'll get an idea of whether you've got enough or too much. So what we're going to do in the second version, don't do it yet, I'll show you first. Let's put our two blocks with a blanket on top probably. Underneath our navel, we're gonna come up, and we're gonna release the crown of the head to rest on that surface. What we don't wanna do is collapse like that. What we wanna do is keep stretching it up so that the neck releases down from the upward stretching back, right? That's all. Okay, so when you're ready, including immediately you place it under start on your hands and knees and put it underneath your navel right which is your belly button and you'll probably need more height than i had right you, <laughs> there you go so if you need another block let me know so you're starting on your hands and knees with the block underneath your navel and then you lift up when you're ready and then you might straight away realize, oh my God, those blocks are miles away. Don't bend your elbows or push your head. Your head should drop from an uplifting sensation. I'm bringing more blocks around to nearly everyone. <laughs> so it's up, don't drop onto the block. You're not using your head as a support. Your head releases down. Good, yeah, take your hands really far forwards, much further forwards. I'll bring you more support here. Here at the BBC, of course, I'm bringing blocks at home if you're practicing this, watching it on Zoom, then you might use whatever, I don't know what. <laughs> it's sharp. If you take your hands further forwards to where my hand is, but it's miles away, oh my God, good job. And then gently push, breathe easy. Just the crown of the head. That should rest and settle. Good. But don't lose the uplift. Don't compromise the uplift. If you need more blocks, let me know. Good, looks good. You haven't lost your touch. Looks good, yeah. So bring your hands a little further forwards to where my hand is, which is a horribly too far. I know, I do love you though. Good. Well done, gang. Down you come, back to hands and knees. Take a breath, like a deep breath that I can hear. Yeah, take a few, <laughs> take a few of those deep breaths. And then, nice and not easy, we're going to put two blocks, long side to long side. And we're gonna fold our yoga mat as a gift for you. Pleasure, gift for you. I'm trying to help some people. I can't help you all, but I'd love to. I've managed to help three. It's not as many as I'd like, but I'd love to help more. <coughs> Nearly, but just turn those books away around that way. Oh, your nail varnish is magnificent. Look at that then you're going to cross your legs. So those of you at home, you've got two blocks long sides. As long sides, you cross your legs. Imagine my feet are on blocks. They're not, but imagine that they are. And then tuck the buttocks under towards the heels. Come down. Scoot under again. <laughs> Elbows out. Oh, my God. If you don't like that, you don't like life. <laughs> Saying that, if your back feels tight, let me know, and I'll bring you more blocks. Good. Yeah. Always down. <laughs> Went down quick. Good. Well done. Take a breath or two. I like to stretch my arms over my head for this. Is that okay? The sun in your eyes. Like that. Do you quite like it? Oh, good. You can imagine you're on a lovely summer holiday. <laughs> so I like to stretch my arms over the head because I can sense, maybe you can too, a stretch that comes from the inner groins across the lateral sides of the pubis through into the deep belly. And that stretch of the psoas, if I breathe into it, if you breathe into it, if we breathe into it, provides a really deep release, deep down to the very sort of substrata 
of our nervous system. So yoga is just that, isn't it? Two stepping stones to cross the river. <laughs> On one shore of the river, our experience is independent. It's an experience of good and bad, of success and failure, of us and them, of gain and loss, of comprehension and misunderstanding. All these polarities on one side of the river. The far shore, if you were to stand there, everything would be experienced as interdependent. You and me are the same. If I'm hungry, if this body's hungry, I feed it. If that body's hungry, I feed it. It's no different. I'm not being charitable, it's just they're the same on the far shore. How do you get from one to the other? Two stepping stones. A rich experience, like the stretch that you might feel across your groins, in your deep belly, through into the very depths of your belly. And giving to that rich experience. which we do through the breath. And as soon as you take that second stepping stone of giving to, the, to any rich sensation, the taste of your coffee in the morning, the kiss of someone you like on, on your cheek, the feel of early morning sun on your face. Huh? As soon as you give, then immediately the interdependent is all that there is. And clinging is negated. One can't cling when one can't see anything that could be separated off to cling to. So this is why giving is so central in these practices. The practice is known as dana. And if you look in the South Asian traditions, it's important in all of them, right up to very, very the most recent uh, religions of South Asia, uh, Sikhism. Change the cross of your legs when you're ready. The other leg in front. <laughs> Big stretch, isn't it? Let's make it softer for you. If you bring your knees towards each other for a second and then down again. <laughs> Good. If you're finding your back's tight, just let do let me know. I mean, at home, of course, there's, there's not much I can do if your back's tight. So remember, we're just laying on our backs. And breathing and experiencing the richness, giving to the richness. And that's why we sometimes, in some of the traditions of South Asia, we call this interdependent experience, sometimes we call it the mother, the mother, or the Devi, the goddess. Because if you give to her, she liberates. And the reason we call her the mother is obvious, I suppose, because everything is everything. This field of interdependence sort of bumps into uh, elements within itself and creates new elements. And so it's a, in a constant flow and a dance of arising and ceasing. like raindrops on the surface of a, a lake, making ripples here and ripples there, and then the ripples bump into other ripples and make new ripples. And this is the goddess. 
And when we give to her, we feel her codependence. And clinging just is like, is incomprehensible. Okay, bring your legs back together. Soles of the feet on the floor. Just scoot the buttocks under. Let me hear you take a deep breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. Or two, or five, or ten. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Roll over onto your side when you're ready. Or maybe I'll repeat that. Roll over onto your side. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, exactly. Because you're also chillaxed, which is, you might not have heard of that term yet. It's a contemporary term, chillaxed. It's very trendy, as indeed am I. So, but if you want something, you know, if you want to take something really nice from someone, you've got to give them something really nice in return. So take two blocks like I've done here. If you haven't got blocks at home, you can use blankets. If you haven't got blankets at home, you can use towels. If you haven't got towels at home, what? Where's your towels? Uh, then we're going we're gonna to pleat it. I don't know if I should, but I always still do sing in my head to the music of Michael Jackson's Beat It. I just replace it with Pleat It. So Pleat It when you're ready. That's what you make. I think it's Stevie Ray Vaughan playing the guitar in that song. I'm not sure if that's correct, but I think it is. You Pleat It. Now you need a belt as well. I'm not sure everyone's got a belt in here, so I might have to scoot downstairs and get belts before I do. I'll uh, demonstrate. So if you haven't got a belt, don't worry yet. Uh, if you've got a, I'm going to bring third blocks around as well. Which we'll go on top like this. I'll very briefly demonstrate my borrowing Simon's belt, and then I'll go and get more belts for anyone who hasn't got any. So first thing to do is make sure the belt's undone. The belt has a, a clear back to it. I think that's a clear back with a clips kind of wrap round and a clear front to it, right? So we're going to thread through, round the back, like that, through near the material side of that bar, and then back through the other way. And that should make a locking belt, right? a locking belt. Having done that, so I'll go through the demo quite quickly now, because uh, it will be more important that I'm just scooting around and helping y'all. You put the belt around you, goes around your inner thighs. The most important thing is to remember it is around the inner thighs. Then it goes underneath your feet. If I show you front forwards, underneath your feet, you do it up so it's taut but not tight. And it goes around the back of your pelvis, which is your sacrum. It shouldn't go into your lower back. Someone's going, oh, I'm going to give this belt back to you, Simon, in a second. Oh, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I'm super important is this. You tuck the pelvis under towards your heels and... Pressing into the lift, stretch your lower back, keeping your chin towards your chest. If you lay down rather than stretch down, you won't be comfortable. So we've got to stretch down, not lay down. And I'll come and supervise, pleasure, supervise you in your endeavors. Good. Yeah, you got it. Oh, another block for that. Oxy time. Good. That's it. Put it over here, between your legs. Nearly. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna present, pretend you're being sort of given some an award. Oh, okay. There you go. It's exciting. Bring your feet close to your pelvis. That's it. And bring your soles of your feet together to touch. Don't bring the belt there now. Keep it where it is. Oh. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. Yeah. 
but that's a pleasure. And then you can pull that to make it more tight. Make sure the belt's down low and make sure you scoot the buttocks towards your heels and stretch your back. Please don't lay down, but stretch down. That looks good. Is it staying done up? Yeah, it is. Oh, <laughs> so good. good. Yeah, you got it. That's the first movement. Do that again. That's scooting under. Just, um, yeah, like that way. Yeah, and then stretch your back. Beautiful. Yeah, I'll stay here. <laughs> Breathe easy. It's okay. Good. Well done, Kate. Good. I, should, I could make like a little mask for you, like uh, the Lone Ranger made of shadow. Okay, keep your eyes closed. I've got a second solution. Keep your eyes closed for a second. Good. You need to be sitting on the floor, not the lift. Keep them closed, keep them closed. Yes, how are you feeling? Feel okay? Slight strain. <laughs> Where have you got the strain? Okay, lift your head. Bring it down again. Uh, bring it down again. Okay. Just stay as you are. Don't do anything to help me. Try to manhandle you. <laughs> and then stretch your arms over your head towards me. Just hold on to my marvellous leggings. And don't do anything to help me. And then hold your elbows over your head, so that way. That's it. Any, yeah, good. If you're not comfy in the back, tell me. Using words such as, I'm not comfy in the back. Okay, so there we are. Don't jump back anymore. That's it. Place your hands on the floor like that, like that. Fingers pressed forward. Scoot the buttocks under towards your heels. This way. That's it. And then stretch your back. Keep your chin towards your chest. Keep stretching. <laughs> Lift your head for a micro moment and descend it. And then take a deep breath. <sighs> and then palms up. You got it. You got it. So please let me know if your back's tight, even a bit. You might think, oh, you, you know, if, you've, if you're British or if you've been in the UK long enough, you might have got this British thing where you don't complain ever. But I want you to, <laughs> just to say, oh yeah, I've got a tiny nibble because we're supposed to, oh, I'd be fine, don't worry about me. But any niggles, let me know. Hey? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, Monty Python, Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can go. I think you can. I think you can. But I'll give you what I'm going to do is give you a wafer thin one and more another Monty Python <laughs> reference. And yes. <yeah. laughs> Yes, breathe easy. See if you can say yes with the breath, at least with one breath. Yes, at least with one breath. Very good. So the pose is Supta Bada Konasana. And just notice, just notice. Okay, I'm going to give you a tummy break. Now, the great thing about Sukta Baddha Konasana, it's great for yoga students, yoga practitioners, but it's also useful for yoga teachers when they've had one cup of tea too many. I'm just going to lift your knee and neck. And they need a quick emergency wee. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to go. And I'm going to just follow the proper etiquette of leaving the Zoom microphone <laughs> here.
Bring your heart on your thighs. We press resolutely into the ground. Press resolutely into the ground to bring yourself up. And then nice and slow and easy. You can undo. I hope you can undo the belt. Well done. Doing that with style, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well done. Once you've undone the belt, you're going to sit. Now, uh, if you've got a cork block, they're pretty good to sit on. Otherwise, you can use two blocks, short end facing forwards like this, <laughs> and a blanket uh, as well. And I'll show you where that goes in a minute. But you're going to sit in Siddhasana. Siddha. Well, uh, Siddhas are pow uh, powers that are gained through yoga that I've been currently wait waiting 33 years for these powers. They haven't come yet, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> I know they'll come eventually. So the heels align with each other in the midline of the body, and then you place the blanket underneath your shins. Draw the buttock flesh out and back. And let the bum relax. And let the shoulders relax. Now we find time and again, even going back to the Upanishads, uh, references to channels, but particularly in the Upanishads, which are the earliest reference to channels in the body and winds in the body, there's an emphasis on the heart plexus of channels, where 101 different channels, according to the Upanishads, emanate from this heart uh, plexus. As time goes by, the philosophies get more refined in their descriptions. And in the center, the very center becomes a psychophysical correlate to being centered. And being centered means that imagining a compass or a watch with so many points around. And at each point, there's an opposite. On a clock, there's a three, the opposite is nine, or 12 and six. Or on a compass, north and south, east and west, and so on. And lots of points all around the opposites. Those are called dualities. They represent our normal tendencies to reach out. So yoga looks at many ways in which we can find a visceral correlate to being centered and to bring gravity and emphasis into that center. So this is a little practice for that. What we're going to do in a minute is breathe in and then re-breathe, which means you're going to take a bit of the inhale, not going to breathe out, a bit more of the same inhale, and maybe even a bit more, like blowing up a balloon. When I, I blow up balloons, like, you know, little, little, little. So similarly, like a balloon in the heart that you're blowing up with bringing energy in. 
And when then you hold your breath, you hold the energy in, and you do the actions that I'm about to show you. So I'll show you the whole thing, and then you can um, do it yourself. So remember, these actions are there to massage that energy in the heart. This is what it looks like before you do it. I'll show you. That's quite a lot. That was a breath hold. Um, but no, I did five, 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 five. That's a longer breath hold. So st start with three, uh, like three, three. You start with your right. I was mirroring right arm first. Huh? So when we're ready, we're going to, I'll talk you through it as well. Inhale into the heart, re inhale, re inhale. Hold it, right arm. Massaging the heart as you move your arm around three times and then three on the other. And then this rather sassy circling with your hands stationary on your leg. It's just, <laughs> you're massaging your heart three times and then three times the other. And then you breathe out. <sighs> and you take another deep breath just to relax. <sighs> Just feel like you've placed a bit of an anchor in the heart center, in the heart center. And we'll do the same practice one more time. So when you're ready, breathing and rebreathing. Right arm first. Really feel you're massaging the heart three times three on the other. So really feel like that energy is being massaged. Then the shoulder shimmy, which is actually for the heart again, three times and then three. Keep the hand still on the leg. The hand doesn't move. And then you breathe out. And just let natural breaths happen, but really have this sense that there's this deeper, stronger anchor in the heart center. And to really, it's like we've now sort of cultivated an area of land. And now we're going to plant a seed. This is a bija, which means seed, mantra. And this is sometimes called the denu um, bija. And this is said to be the sound that the mummy cow makes to call her babies back to her, which is quite nice, isn't it? Nice idea. So what are the babies? They're the parts of yourself that get pulled out. You know? So the, the mantra is Hung, it's spelled H-U-M with a dot underneath the M and a straight line across the uh, U. And that's pronounced as Hung. Huh? So as you do it, as we do it together, we're going to do it for an extended exhalation, chanting Hung. But imagine you're planting it like you're planting it into the ground and then that seed stays and it will stay during the day and act as anchor. So inhale when you're ready, inhale. Oh. And then deep breaths after that. And just feel that you're planted, that seed is planted, that hung. And it keeps honging, if that, if that is a word. <laughs> and you can imagine, it's, you know, you set it off, but it's still doing it. Uh. 
we're going to bring ourselves, we're just still hunging away, we're going to bring ourselves to lay down uh, flat on our backs, really comfortable, I hope. Some head support should be taken, your head shouldn't tip back. I always enjoy watching people get into Shavasana because there's such speed to it. <laughs> people are so enthusiastic. It's marvelous to see. So some support under your head is taken, a block or a neatly folded blanket. So your head shouldn't tip back at all. Why? Because we want the head to tilt towards the heart. Shoulder blades are tucked under, chest is buoyant. Eyes are closed. When we talk about giving in yoga, we're talking about giving to what earlier I referred to as the goddess or the mother. The mother because she is the yoni, that is to say the source of all phenomena. All phenomena are co-created by all phenomena. Things bumping into things, creating other things. <laughs> like thoughts bumping into thoughts and creating new, like the little baby thoughts, you know. Yeah. Or seeds bumping into the earth and creating little baby trees. Things bumping into other things. Or ripples bumping into other ripples and creating new ripples. So this is the experience, the ungraspable flow of the moment. And as we rest into the ungraspable flow of the moment, guess what? We don't grasp. And when we don't grasp, tada drashtu swarupe avastanam, then we fall into our unbounded, unconditioned, uncreated, uncompounded, unlimited, true nature. Like all the toes, feel into your body like it's something new and fingers and wrists, just feeling into the body. And when you're ready, bend your legs and place the soles of your feet onto the floor. Just scoot the buttocks under and let me hear you take a deep breath with a sigh like exhale. A few of those deep breaths come and go. Mm. 
scroll onto your side facing away from the shrine side of the room. Then when you're ready, roll again and face towards the shrine side of the room. Knees drawn up, the tummy is soft. And we can focus on that feeling in the deep belly like we did before, that is restorative like deep sleep. You feel ready. You might want to rub your eyes or stretch out an arm or a leg. When you feel ready, bring yourself up nice and easy from the side using your arms to help your ascent. And if you want, you can face towards the shrine with your hands in prayer. And Really think about the words that uh, I'm about to say. And remember when we say all beings, it all definitely includes, you know, this being. <laughs> yeah. Just listen to the words and if you agree, uh, at the end say Om. Oh. May any merit gained in our acting in this way go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Om. Oh. Feel that prayer, that intention radiating out and remember it radiates out from a point right in the middle of your own being. So it includes your own being as it were. Thanks very much for your time. Zoomers and rumors. And uh, just to let you know, there's a workshop with uh, Jim Taran uh, next Sunday here in this Brighton Buddha Center. Uh, it's all about breath stuff. So if you're interested in that, it'll be body work and breath work uh, you book through me. Uh, apart from that, I'm running a holiday in July. Uh, we've reduced, we've done a reduction on it by 15%, which is 200 quid off it. Still, you only got the money you got at the end of the day, but if you've got the money and you want to spend it, there's a yoga holiday in July to France. Very posh, very lovely. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, Yoga Explorers. Otherwise, I'll let you go now. No more adverts. Love you. Thank you for coming. That's a love. Love to you. You know I'm talking to. Hey, you. See you really soon. Thank you. Bye, gang. Behave yourselves. Ciao.